socially fluent people read it. What are some mistakes you see socially awkward people making? Some people will talk about themselves and nothing else. The trick is to get other people to do that. Imagine two awkward people trying to achieve this goal simultaneously. HMM I think I've been a part of this conversation before. I think I've been part of this conversation many times before. If two awkward people are both trying to get the other person to talk about each other, usually this results in a pleasant normal conversation. Now probably will just end up in both of them saying they don't have much going, and and have an awkward silence im awkward and this happened too many times. When you mix this one with complaining all the time, save me. Many people find complaining and pointing out negative things as the easiest methods of conversation, but it's not a great way to make a good impression or connect with people. You'll just be seen as a walking bus girl. Reminds me of Franz Ferdinand with to bump into you accidentally, I charm you, and tell you of the boys I hate, all the girls I hate, all the words I hate, all the clothes I hate, how I'll never be anything I hate you smile, mention something that you like. Oh, you mean the band. No, the Archduke of Austria made some pretty sweet popular music between 1907 and 1914, it was the older rage with the Habsburgs. He was touring Sarajevo at the time he was assassinated by a crazed fan. You seem like a silly goose. Ask questions rather than give the input about your own life. Someone starts talking about their dog. Ask some questions. Don't automatically go into a tirade about your dog. Letting someone else do the talking means you have to talk less, and questions make you more attentive. Yeah but I feel like people often overcompensate for this, and it ends up an interrogation. Agreed. In the best conversations both parties are equal parts asker and answerer. If you're talking to someone who doesn't get this, it's probably not going to be a great conversation. What breed is it? How old is she? Does she do tricks? Is she usually a good dog? Is she your first dog? What is her nonum? I see a lot of socially awkward people that are so preoccupied with trying to find a way to continue the conversation that they fail to either listen to the person while they're talking or they miss an obvious opportunity to continue the conversation. Yeah it's hard to mentally function in the extreme conditions of a potential anxiety attack. I'm not dissing. I'm just saying what it looks like from my perspective. I completely understand how social anxiety can incapacitate someone. I'm sorry if this came across as rude. Nah didn't think so was just saying. Good deal, wanted to make sure. It doesn't matter how funny it was earlier that day, when you saw it, don't force someone to watch a 4 minute YouTube clip on the spot. Time slows down so much, when you're being forced to watch a YouTube clip you don't want to watch. Especially when it's on someone else's greasy, thumbprinted old smartphone, that you can barely see due to the glare. With the brightness, turned all the way down for some reason. Yeah, what I do, is text them hey, this is hilarious, you should totally watch it, and send them a link to the video. If they bring it up, when we see each other, I talk about it, if they don't, I don't mention it. Why isn't this the top comment? Hands down one of the worst social offenses. I'm gonna waste, minimum of your time, to show you the slam a video, that only I enjoy. Tap screen to see how much time is left on video. Don't explain the plots of books, movies, or dreams in anything longer than 3 sentences. I promised myself I would stop scrolling when I found a tip that would make me feel guilty. Guess I'll stop scrolling now. Have an upvote. Perfect. Exactly 3 sentences. One time the girl sitting next to me on a greyhound described a night's tale scene by scene to me. It took about 2 hours. I was a little confused by her dedication to explaining every single detail, but in the end it was a pretty entertaining bus ride. That's roughly 10 minutes shorter than the actual movie, you should have thanked her for her efficiency. Jokes on her. You just got a free audiobook. Don't highlight your flaws. If you make a mistake, say something awkward or just have a bad zit, don't draw everyone's attention to it. They probably didn't notice. 
This actually reminds me of when a girl in my class had to present a project in front of the class she was nervous and was making mistakes with her words and, rather than moving on and just repeating the sentence over again, she would shout blah and stick her tongue out this happened many many times and it just always made it way more obvious that she had messed up. IDK about this one. I like to joke about my receding hairline. It's something obvious yet non-important. I usually get a good laugh out of it. I think the trick is to joke about something you aren't obviously self-conscious about. One self-deprecating joke in an evening is fine. 20 self-deprecating jokes in an evening is uncomfortably pathetic. Forcing a joke or trying too hard to be funny. I find certain socially awkward people repeat jokes they heard or try way too hard when it's not relevant to the conversation. I just find some socially awkward people try too hard to be liked and sometimes come off too strong. One of the initial stages of going from extremely socially awkward to socially adept is forcing jokes or trying too hard to be funny likable. The upshot is that if you learn from this, you become learn to read a room. It's a key skill for the socially adept, as comedy is one of those things that can rapidly spin out of control once it crosses the line. Learning to figure out where that line is, and if when how to cross it can be the difference between being remembered for the right reasons or the wrong ones. One day I will become learn to read the room. Someone set us up the joke. Not reading body language in conversations. When you're talking to one or more people, you should be assessing whether the other person people are indicating that they would like to be done talking. A few indicators to watch for are looking around the room while you're talking instead of at you. Body is not facing you but turned sideways, short answers to questions, not contributing much, playing with keys phone. If you see these, you can politely end the conversation and be done talking for the time being. This is a big one. Once I finally figured how to make a conversation flow, I then had to learn this whole other thing. Reading body language or vibe is good. A big one I've heard a lot is the feet. Someone's torso may not be pointed at you, but I heard that a big indicator of where their mind is, is where their feet are. If they are aimed at the door, they are not looking for more. If you're wondering if a girl is into you, look at her feet. If they're behind her ears she probably likes you. Succinct communication. I often overhear people telling stories which include impertinent details or leave out crucial details without realizing how irritating this can be. One of my good friends had this issue in that he'd always try to protract stories to 3x the required length. I drunkenly told him how it was aggravating listening to him struggle to maintain focus in his storytelling briefing and that he should work on getting to the point, especially when speaking to senior executives strapped for time. He told me he hadn't even realized he was doing it, and later thanked me for pointing it out. I'm still trying to figure out the sweet spot for telling stories. Either I rush through them, and lose the detail, that makes them interesting, quickly running out of stories, or they go on and on and on until the conversation moves on. Either I try to shorten them, and end up in the first situation, or my constant ADHD leads to a bunch of offshoot stories that I start, but don't finish them all. I'm like a recursive function that starts something then kicks the task off to something else. I just need to reach the final element of my list so it can start kicking back return values and concluding things on my program stack. Once I start getting return values, I'm gonna take the world by storm. Confidence is quiet, anxiety speaks. Confident people say I did this, non-confident people say I did this because Basically, unless someone asks you, don't preemptively justify or explain yourself. Oh I love this thank you. All good see, if you can notice it, in like waiters and salespeople, if they can't sell you something, the smooth ones say sorry we are out, the flustered ones say sorry we are out, but I could try to get you something special instead sorry it's just we had this pagoda and it's all gone man. I live in HK. Local restaurant wait staff would just say no more, or all gone, haha, <laughs> but I get your point. Your comment resonated with me, because I realized I constantly justified myself, and as I have grown more confident I don't do it anywhere near as much. I'm not sure you're asking the right crowd, boss. I don't know a single extra who uses reddit lol. Whether you are, or aren't sure if she's pregnant, don't say anything about it. Haha <laughs> your mom is fat. 
I'm not even born yet, Root. Yes please. I've been asked this in public many times. All I can do is say that I'm not pregnant and try to hide my red face. I'm kinda fat unfortunately, especially around the belly, but not obese, so I understand that people make mistakes, but it still stings when someone actually thinks I'm pregnant. I can't entirely help my appearance. I used to get this a lot. Allow me. You make for eye contact. No, I'm just fat. Give it a minute. Well, at least only one of us is embarrassed. As well as demonstrating how rude the behavior is, it's honestly so empowering. Lack of confidence. I'm no stud, but I can get a conversation going. Anyone who has trouble maintaining eye contact or doesn't know what to do with their hands are pretty common. Also, that someone please talk to me look. Also, don't eat up my break time talking about work, Kelly. It makes me avoid you. Also, don't eat up my break time talking about work. The people I work with mostly only talk about work and it drives me insane. I share staff room with several older women. I wish they'd talk about work rather than what grandchild hash 3 did with their toes the other day. Be careful what you wish for. Ironically, I have found that socially awkward people tend to struggle with silence. They get visibly uncomfortable, and I imagine it's because they are overthinking the scenario. Socially fluent people are usually like that because the conversations they have are natural, and they do not try to force things. If I'm with someone and neither of us have anything to talk about, I have no issue with the quiet. This seems to be especially true in relationships. You know you are with the right person when you can talk for hours and not get sick of each other, but you can also be in each other's presence without a word being said and still enjoy it. That's when you know you've found somebody special, when you can just shut the FK up for a minute and comfortably enjoy the silence. My Wallace. This is precisely the point I try to make to my friends. It is not socially awkward to have silence. Don't backtrack a conversation. Everyone, and I mean everyone, comes up with the perfect response comment joke 5 minutes later after the conversation moves on to a new topic. Let it go. You'll get another chance. Eye contact is a big one. Also, don't immediately dive into the personal questions and oversharing and guilty of this too. It takes practice to stop doing it. I've spent 35 years trying to learn eye contact. I still haven't managed to be comfortable with it, but I can fake it fairly well now. It's very hit or miss for me. There are people that make me feel incredibly uncomfortable when I look them in the eye. Normally it's either when they have a very apathetic look or crazy eyes. I hate making eye contact. It makes me super uncomfortable and I feel sick doing it. When people talk to me, I look at their eyebrows or their ears or gently look from one to the other, look down for a moment or two then look back. I make sure I'm not intensely staring either. When I look down I also look at their body language. The one thing I struggle with is how much eye contact you make when you're walking in the hall and see coworkers. I generally look at their face, smile or say hello for a few seconds then look down and walk past. Don't mind me, just a socially awkward person taking notes. Saving every single comment rn. Don't talk to speak. Talk to listen. This should be upvoted more. Don't drink significantly more alcohol than the people you are with. This is surprisingly easy to mess up. Or don't drink as much as the others, only to keep up with them. And then throwing up. I see a lot of them doing it in this thread, bringing up the challenges you have faced major props for overcoming them, and all the mental health issues you deal with again, major props. Start conversations assuming other people have come up against equal or more challenges and don't try to one-up them, or be defensive, if they call you out on something. Everyone is facing their own battle, and even if it's not fair that you have to know that without them telling you, it's still a necessity when dealing with others. True, you can only know your worst. So whatever someone's been through is their worst, so it's not a competition. And those who out of context bring up their mental health issues from the past are the same ones to be like hash m e n t a l h e a l t h a w a r n e s s let's change society. If it isn't appropriate to bring up in conversation it's a pretty odd way to keep the convo up, you're basically having a conversation with someone else just about you to get kudos. 
if the subject came up in the natural flow of conversation that's fine, but some people wake up and decide they're going to go around telling everyone how hard they've had it and how far they've come all the time. Super prolonged eye contact. Eye contact is great and all, but when you're telling a story or having a conversation, it's very normal for your eyes to move around the room. It's super uncomfortable when someone stares straight at you when you're talking and they don't ever break eye contact for over 20 minutes. I've got a friend that does this. He will literally just stare you down sometimes without any break in eye contact. It makes me quite uncomfortable some of the time, but I usually just try to ignore it by looking around in other areas. I need to get this through my head because I make a lot of eye contact. I've never felt like I've made other people uncomfortable, but now I'm replaying every interaction I've ever had, and now I want to KMS. While you are at it, don't joke about killing yourself. It's not funny. If you have a joke to make, make it loudly and casually. If it doesn't land, move on. Nothing is more cringy than when someone tells a joke, everyone ignores it we see it as bad, and then they keep making it, until they get some recognition. I was dating a girl once, and went to a family dinner at her parents. Her brother grabbed a can of pop, and says to the whole table I'm gonna have a beer with dinner, a root beer. Zero laughs. Nobody even cracked a smile. He attempted this three more times during the dinner. Eventually everyone kinda run comfortably went hey he, just to get him to move past it. Broke up with her a few months later. That is truly one of the worst ones to witness lol. Socially fluent people have read it, I've got a question for you. Yeah, both of you. When they don't know when to stop talking. There are so many physical cues to when someone is done talking, but when you're unaware and keep blathering on, my secondhand embarrassment just spikes. Leave the cashier alone, Carl. She's just being polite. Sitting in a group of people playing games on your phone. Why even bother? Not excusing this, but people who are anxious or under a lot of stress tend to do this in an effort to distract themselves. Their phones provide an easy way to calm themselves down. Because everyone's too engaged with each other for me to break in, nobody will come talk to me or include me in the group and I've got nothing better to do, while I question, why I even showed up. You need to give off a vibe or energy of confidence. Even if you don't have it, faking that you have it eventually allows you to really have it. Don't worry so much about being wrong, instead focus on projecting your best self, and interacting with others in good ways. I can understand the fake it till you make it advice, and it can work, but acting and projecting a version of myself all day is very exhausting. Don't fake it, until you make it, be it until you become it. I'm not the most socially fluent out there, but FFS please stop saying I'm a nice guy girl. You are definitely not, if you have to repeat it constantly. Apologizing instead of thanking, rather than saying sorry for being late, thank them for being patient. Or when it's urgent, don't apologize for taking their time, say if I could have a moment of your time instead. Thank you that I slept with your sister. Good advice. Terrible example of the wrong is on your end. Acknowledge it instead of trying to downplay it with a phrase that prompts a your welcome no problem response. A thing that I see a lot is people saying that nobody likes them or they have no friends. I see this in a couple of my friends and it makes it really hard to try and support them when they disregard my efforts to be there for them even when they are clearly exaggerating. One of the worst things insecure people do is just blatantly expose all their insecurities through the thin veil of a joke. Everyone understands it's not a joke. Everyone gets put in a very awkward position and it doesn't net the insecure person any social points. Quite the opposite. Not making eye contact. Am I the only one who thinks that sometimes people give too much eye contact? In most social situations, I prefer we have something else to observe than just our faces. Other times, suddenly I'm being introduced to someone and have to make prolonged weird eye contact with a stranger. For me looking at the eyes is like looking at the sun. It's too much for me. My manager pointed this out to me during a meeting a few months ago. Asked me why I had a problem with it and said she noticed a pattern. Glance at the eyes, look right, look down, back to the eyes. Embarrassed to say, I've been putting a ton of effort and practice into it. 
had my first date in a while last week and I noticed halfway through I was doing eye contact really well without realizing it second date next week.